Um, I would like to stay in the industry at the moment and like to welcome Christian Fredriksen. He is the CEO and president of F-Secure since January 2012. Uh, previous, previously, he's been working uh, at Nokia Siemens Networks, and uh, he's also on the steering board for the uh, Cloud for Europe partnership. Um, Mr. Fredriksen, you are famous for building uh, software for the desktop, but now you have uh, security uh, software for the desktop, but now uh, you've switched more or less and trying to pro go more into the service direction. And you have developed uh, an interesting cloud service. It's called um, United. Yes. Maybe you can give us some insight what uh, are the features of this service and what could it bring to the whole Europe for Cloud initiative? Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe before I, I start uh, selling my product here. <laughs> uh, I, thought, I thought actually I would give you first because it's been so much discussion on security and cloud. And so let me give you a f few facts actually. Now, being the guy with no hair, uh, working in the security industry. I'll give you some facts of today uh, from the commercial, the criminal, and the state point of view of what does this threat landscape mean? Because we all talk a lot about it, but actually let's see what it means. So I'll start with the free apps. And let me state once again, there are no free apps. But you should know that by now because none of you pays Google and they make billions every quarter. So you do the math. And there is also a lot of apps. And when you click the I accept on the, on the different free apps, nobody ever reads the small text. And I mean nobody. I tried to read through it once, but I fell asleep halfway. <laughs> and, uh, but basically, you, be, you move from being the customer to being the product. That's what you accept. And you sell everything you have, your movement, your click, even your children is gone with that move. And let me give you some other facts on the apps. On average, any one of you and any person will be on 89 sites per week. 89 sites per week on average is what we browse. Behind every one of those, there is 12 sites connect, collecting information on you. That's a lot of sites profiling you every single time you move around. And they look at your GPS, where you are, what you do, what you click, what you ask for. All that information is profiling you. If that doesn't bother you, that's OK then. At least you know what's coming your way. So we believe that from our product's point of view, we want the user to understand at least what's going on with them. And then they choose, because a lot of that profiling is good. It helps the consumer, and it helps the companies. And a lot of that is bad. And it's only a question of how do you know as a user when you give your data. But let me talk about the criminals. We have a honeypot, as we call it. It's a, data, a few data centers around the world collecting information from all the attacks. And most of our R&D today is actually running and improving on our automated systems of scanning, finding, and cleaning, and stopping even preempt them now. We find on average between 100,000 and 300,000 new malware attacks every 24 hours. 100,000 to 300,000 every 24 hours. That's new mutations that the criminal gangs are doing. It's not a small amount. And I'll give you another example. So this would be child work. We are today here in this session. There's a lot of Wi-Fi. And a lot of people have connected to different Wi-Fi's. Now, we have done a test on this one. If you go to, if you go to Google and you Google hack Wi-Fi, you will get 800,000 hits in different ways of how to hack a Wi-Fi network. My 13-year-old girl can do it. There's videos with the screenshots how to do a Wi-Fi hack. And I could have started and built 
my own Wi-Fi example here today. And when you go there and you look at which one to connect with your tablet and with your phone, it would, I call it the Wi-Fi bingo. And I would put a star ahead of my Wi-Fi so I would be on top of the list and half of you would have clicked on my Wi-Fi. And then I would have all your credentials. I would have your email passwords, your Facebook passwords, and I could do whatever I please with that information. And as I said, it is ridiculously easy. And none of you probably have protection or any kind of security protection for that. So the criminals are interesting. And then the, I come to the state, which is a good lesson learned for myself and our industry as well. Because from June, when Snowden came out with the relevations, little did we know, not even I imagined the sophistication level of the attacks. Impressive. Some of the software they've done is truly impressive. Our software engineers are thrilled by the capabilities that they have built. I know that not everybody else is as thrilled as they are. And uh, it only shows how far it has gone. And I think that the interesting part of that is, of course, that U.S. is not the, it's not the only one who spies. I think Neely Cross said very well that that's what, that's what the security organization do, is that they spy. And, uh, but clearly, U.S. has the absolute dominance of the Internet. So they have by far better tools than anybody else. So it's not an even game from that perspective that everybody else coming from another country would have the same capabilities. Probably many countries would have done the same thing if they had had the same chance, but they don't. So it's a basically a, a country which has monopoly on internet. And then, of course, one country, which is China, we now looking at it from inside, was a pretty smart move. So they built their own intranet. And they are having their own game plan at the moment. And here we are, then with Europe. And I believe that in this world, there are no borders. We all know that. You cannot, the only way if you want to be 100% safe is you're not connecting to anything. There is no internet connection, there is no Bluetooth, no wireless LAN, and then there is no person even who gets into that one because otherwise you can bribe that person or get to the individual. So you lock it up, save your data somewhere, and nobody ever has access to it, but then it doesn't make much sense, does it, because you want to get access to your data. I believe ourselves that we can easily handle and will handle the applications and the commercial stuff, we can handle the criminals as well. That's the daily life of a security company. We know what's going on there. It's a tennis game, ping pong bang, good cop, bad cop chasing on the internet in the online world. And we're doing a lot to protect that. But uh, the state sponsored is a di very different thing. And I don't believe having countrywide uh, data centers or anything like that is gonna happen unless you're gonna shut down the whole country and have no access out of the country. So really, I believe in having a European cloud. I believe strongly that that's the way forward for Europe. And I also believe that we should build competitiveness in this, in this part of the world as well, because we are the suckers in between now. You got the US and the China, they're coming left and right, and we're sitting here doing nothing about it. So I think at the end of it, uh, I realize that security and privacy Nobody will buy products if you look at the consumers or companies because of that primarily, never. You have to have first and primarily always competitive products. You gotta be a competitive company, people will not shift otherwise. There is no excuse for that. But I still think that we have to build that capability in Europe as well, uh, and not, not sit here and watch everybody and run fast and, and we're gonna be the old legacy guys who are, and, and women who can't get anything done. So, so, so just, to summarize on then my product punch. Yes, just one, one minute for the commercial break. <laughs> yeah, now, I, now I'm supposed to give the, the I, that was my point on, on uh, this. So out of this, what's, I think it's a phenomenal opportunity for European companies, <clears throat> a phenomenal opportunity. So let's use this beautifully into our advantages as well. And I hope two things on this one only. 
First, I would hope the public sector also supports the SMEs because that's something that you have to give credit to China and US. They have been brilliant on that. They have bought from small companies because how can they ever get to big companies if, if the public sector doesn't support it? So that's something that they have done extremely well. I hope that happens also in Europe and many of you who are in public sector that you can and you look at opportunities, which means some of them will fail and you will have to accept that as well in your countries. Now then the last point, which is the sales pitch. And, and uh, simply we have done two new products that we launched, which is actually going back to this great opportunity. It's not about this, what FCQ has launched. That's not the important thing. I think it's the important part is what a great opportunity this is for us and our markets and our companies and the SMEs. We launched United, which is, which is a cool, full-blown competitor to Dropbox, SkyDrive, Google G Drive a phenomenal product which we believe strongly in. And I believe Dropbox is a glorified file sharing system. So we made something more cool. And by the way, it's private. And uh, on the other side, what we launched as a security product is Freedom from F-Secure, which will make so that you are in control of your digital footprint online when you move around. And you are safe also wherever you are on any device, even if you connect to wireless LANs, which would be hacked, or if you go to sites where you don't want your information to spread. And enough about that. I look forward to talking more. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Almost, <laughs> almost everything covered in the, in the introduction. <laughs> yeah. um,